Redundant haptic interfaces for enhanced force feedback capability despite joint torque limits. To recreate the sensation of touching an environment, a haptic interface displays to the human operator forces received from a virtual environment or robotic proxy probing a physical environment. Ideally, via a haptic interface, a user should experience believable and complex interaction with an environment in ways nearly indistinguishable from direct touch. The environment can be virtual or physical, this is called transparency of haptic interaction or haptic teleoperation. Transparency enhances operators' performance of manipulation and sensing tasks. To design a transparent haptic interface, there are design trade-offs between desirable characteristics of haptic interfaces, such as backdrive friction, apparent inertia, force feedback capability, mechanical stiffness, and workspace size. To best address the design trade-offs and achieve desirable characteristics for haptic interfaces, one can use a kinematically redundant haptic interface. Kinematically redundant haptic interfaces have more degrees of freedom than what is minimally required to perform a task in the Cartesian space. Kinematic redundancy makes it possible to have joint motions that do not affect the position or orientation of the end effector. This inner joint motion can be used in control to achieve multiple objectives while performing a primary objective in task space. For instance, the video on the right shows the manipulability enhancement of a 4 degree of freedom manipulator using internal motion control. Humans employ kinematic redundancies in their body to perform complex dexterous tasks. In a study on the task performance of experienced surgeons, it was shown that they exploit their arm's redundancy to stabilize hand movements more than novice surgeons. This inspires us to introduce and leverage kinematic redundancies in the design of haptic interfaces to improve transparency and user task performance. A redundant haptic interface can be considered as the addition of one or more extra degrees of freedom to the base of a non-redundant haptic interface. Compared to this non-redundant haptic interface, the redundant haptic interface has a larger workspace, increased manipulability, and smaller apparent inertia. However, the force feedback capability of the resulting redundant haptic interface will be upper bounded by that of the non-redundant haptic interface. One of the immediate ways to increase the force feedback capability is to use larger actuators and gearboxes with higher gear ratios at the joints both of which will increase the apparent inertia of the redundant haptic interface and may make it less back-drivable, which is not desirable. An alternative solution to this problem, which is addressed in this research, is employing small actuators that have low rotor inertia and friction in a kinematically redundant serial haptic interface design. However, small actuators have limited torque capability. Here, we propose to leverage the redundancy of the redundant haptic interface and redistribute the torque of the overloaded joints actuator among the available unsaturated actuators to enhance the force feedback capability of the redundant haptic interface. Kinematic redundancy can be resolved to meet different objectives. These objectives usually lead to either velocity control or torque control of the joints. At the velocity level, null space control reconfigures the internal motion of the joints of a redundant robot without affecting the position and orientation of the end effector. At the torque level, the null space control changes the torque vector applied at the joints of the redundant haptic interface without affecting the end effector force or torque. Generally, robot redundancy is used to control the internal motion of joints for obstacle avoidance or joint limit avoidance. For this, the relationship x dot equals j q dot is used to design q dot for a given Cartesian space velocity, considering the redundancy. For redundant haptic interfaces, however, we propose to use the redundancy to control the torques applied at the joints in order to obtain the highest transparency and, in turn, user task performance. For this, the relationship tau equals j transpose times f is used so as to design the joint torque vector tau for a given Cartesian space force torque vector f. The specific contribution of this research is the actuator saturation compensation method. The actuator saturation compensation method is proposed to enhance the force feedback capability of the redundant haptic interface. This method leverages the kinematic redundancy of the haptic interface and distributes the overloaded actuator's torque among the available unsaturated ones. The actuator saturation compensation method enables the redundant haptic interface to achieve a higher force feedback capability with smaller actuators. Smaller actuators have a lower rotor inertia and friction, which lead to smaller apparent inertia and reflected friction at the end effector. Also, they tend to be cheaper, which makes the haptic interface less costly.
Consider a redundant haptic interface with limited joint torque. Consider the case in which the jth joint of the redundant haptic interface is overloaded. The vector tau n is designed such that it brings back the torque of joint j within its boundary by distributing the torque among other joints without overloading them. With this choice of tau n, the torque of joint j will be adjusted back to its saturation level and the associated torque shortage will be distributed between the other joints. However, this could overload other joints of the redundant haptic interface. Thus, this method needs to be repeated iteratively until either there is no overloaded actuator left or the Cartesian space primary task is found to be infeasible, meaning it has to be modified to become realizable for the redundant haptic interface. In this case, a scaling factor alpha that is between 0 and 1 is introduced to make the primary task realizable. Alpha is equal to 1 unless the primary task is not feasible for the redundant haptic interface. After the actuator saturation compensation method resolves joint torque overload, a tertiary objective can be accommodated within the residual torque capacity generation of the redundant haptic interface. The null space controller for the tertiary objective can be utilized to work in parallel with the primary task controller and the actuator saturation compensation method. The tertiary objective has a lower priority than the primary task and the actuator saturation compensation method. In other words, the tertiary objective may not be achieved in favor of achieving the primary task. Also, as the torque limits of the redundant haptic interface's actuator should not be violated, the tertiary objective will have to be satisfied in the null space of the actuator saturation compensation method. Furthermore, beta, which is between 0 and 1, is introduced as a scaling factor to preserve the joint bounds. If the redundant haptic interface does not have any kinematic redundancies left, beta will be equal to 0. In this research, manipulability enhancement of the redundant haptic interface along the direction of the task is proposed as the tertiary objective. Experiments were performed to evaluate the proposed methods using a 4 degree of freedom planar redundant haptic interface. The 4 degree of freedom planar redundant haptic interface was created by using a 2 degree of freedom planar upper limb rehabilitation robot that was serially connected to a 2 degree of freedom phantom robot. Please note that the base joint of the normally 3 degree of freedom phantom robot was removed in order to turn it into a 2 degree of freedom planar robot. A coupler was designed and 3D printed to connect the end effector of the upper limb rehabilitation robot to the base of the phantom robot. To measure forces at the end effector of the redundant haptic interface, a 6 degree of freedom force torque sensor was attached to it. The controllers were implemented in MATLAB and Simulink with Quark real-time control software. The force torque data was sent over UDP from a ROS computer to the computer running MATLAB and Simulink. In the experiments, a user holds the end effector of the redundant haptic interface and palpates a virtual environment along the right-hand direction through it. The virtual environment is modeled as a spring with constant stiffness. The objective of the experiments was to show the enhanced force feedback capability of the redundant haptic interface by using the proposed actuator saturation compensation method. Two cases were considered. In case one, palpation was performed without the actuator saturation compensation method, and in case two, the palpation was performed while employing the actuator saturation compensation method. The data shows that redundancy in the haptic interface leads to enhanced force feedback capability. The maximum force feedback of the redundant haptic interface was enhanced by 73%. The actuator saturation compensation method leverages the kinematic redundancy of the haptic interface to enable it to achieve a higher force feedback capability. This method empowers design engineers to utilize smaller actuators that have lower rotor inertia and friction in the design of new haptic interfaces. This is advantageous because having a low apparent inertia and friction is a requisite for truthfully recreating the feeling of moving in free space. In the future, we will perform an extensive user study to evaluate how using the proposed method affects the perception of free space and stiff environments.